Good afternoon, everybody. I was asked today to give you a little bit of short wrap up about innovation. And um, I will not speak so much about space because that's the subject tomorrow on the innovation stage at 1600. I want to speak about a little bit myself, my childhood. And this was the picture I draw when I was 13 years old. So it's 84. I was the first time visiting the kingdom, my dad in Jeddah, and I thought, this is the future. Star Wars was coming up, and uh, you see, there's a big ship, and uh, that was my idea of future technology when I was 13. Maybe this is the reason also why I ended up with 26 in a company which has good marketing, which was making out of fruits, apples, and computers. And in Apple computer, I learned also a lot of other things different way of leadership. And trust me, Apple leadership in Europe, where I started as a student years ago, was totally different what I learned in the little bit stiff, I would say, leadership sessions which you got in universities and in German companies. Which drives me to nice products which we developed, the Newton. Yesterday, the president of Cars told me he still has one. That was 94. Amazing products, the first digital camera. And this is the first advice I want to give to all the entrepreneurs here in the room. Look to your business model and your timing. Because that is crucial. This product had a battery lifetime of three weeks. It's not like our cell phones today, one or two days, which are not pretty good. But why am you telling that all? Because things are leading up in your career. Then I created my first startup company, doing business innovation, doing electronic software distribution. Why I tell you the story about myself? And this is the moment where I want that you look self backwards. Because Steve Jobs said very nicely, the that's of your career, connecting backwards, when you look backwards, never frontwards. Don't expect when you're looking into the future that everything will connect. And this was his saying through his Stanford speech 2015. And he said, you have to believe in something, in yourself, in destiny, in karma, in guts feeling, whatever. And this way of thinking has changed his life and made all his differences, he said. The dots are connecting frontwards. No, it connects backwards when you're looking back. So this is the reason why maybe I was ending up with the European Space Agency as a head of innovation, supporting startups, new ventures, and um, connecting the dots is important for your life because a lot of things make sense. So what is important for leadership when we speak about companies, startups? It's about people. This gentleman, maybe not known for some of you, Mr. Eckert von Kuhnheim, was CEO of BMW from 90. Uh, from 70 to 93, 23 years. And uh, in the 70s, BMW were in a crisis. They were short before bankruptcy. This gentleman has changed it. And he had a very nice saying, he said, 80% of the problems is about people. The rest, the 20 is about technology and, and finance and so on. So we really have to look to people. He also said, I only read memos with one page. Yeah? If you cannot write that, don't send me 20 pages of explanation and excuses. One page. And if you have not done it, he marked it. The third time, you were not with BMW because they had no time to write 20 pages. So it's about people. This is the reason why 15 years ago we started to work, and now a lot of pictures will come up. We created the world's biggest space entrepreneurship network with around 100 smart people, partners around Yuma. Europe, and there should be more, more and more and more and more pictures coming. Because alone you're not strong. It's the people which makes the thing smart, especially smart people which can work. This goes for big companies and small companies. And this is a little bit the space family, you know? I don't know if you know the Adams family, the monsters. I always think the space family is pretty cool. We are, have a lot of crazy tricks, but sorry, we are also the freaks for the outside. So this is the problem when you have only people from one university. In, in agriculture, you say self implementation does not work. So you need diversity. And therefore, I always think the best team is the mixed pickles team. 
And this is why I like these events so much. I know some people and a lot of I don't. This is where innovation comes together, when you meet new people, new partners, new ideas, different fields. So corporate as well as small ones make the right mixture. And we hear a lot about AI and I want that you go back to your childhood. Do you remember the time in school when you were aware that next year you're allowed to use a calculator in math sessions? So my kids are at that stage. And everybody thought, yes, mathematics becomes easy. You know what? It was becoming harder. And this is the same with AI. AI will make a better doctor better. AI will make a better engineer smarter. A bad one will not become better. AI will help the smart people and the smart processes. Dots of the career. I also spent two years in the army, not in the army, I have to correct me, in the Air Force. I was stationed one year as head of security at Dallas International Airport for the German Air Force. And a lot of stuff I learned there as an officer, I understand, I think with 40, I started to really realize it. And this is now for the leaders for the entrepreneur leaders, but also the big companies. As a leader, and this book is from the 60s, the field handbook of the US Army. It's about trust. If you ask a soldier carrying out another soldier of a battlefield why he's doing that, the answer will be only, he would do the same for me. It's not because it's ordered, it's about the trust in the team. And that is a very powerful force. You have the same in the fire brigade. You have the same in the miners. People which have trust to each other in the leadership team and the fellows, leadership comes also with fellowship, it's very strong. As a leader, you have to have certain discipline and self-control because that is important to also having the right judgment, critical thinking, and the self-awareness and the entropy, the understanding for your fellows. And if you really do that, trust me, this is very, very powerful. I gave you back when you were a bigger company with a management team, and this general was responsible for the German army after the First World War. And this is really a nasty one, but I want to share it, especially when you have a big corporation. And he said, all the officers, the leaders you can put into this matrix. The matrix says, smart, not so smart or dumb, hardworking, and a little bit lazy. And he said, 95% of the troop, of the officers, are the, the lazy, stupid ones. They are normally there, he's right in his managed MOOC for the ordinary tasks. Then we have the people which are here, smart and very hardworking. These officers working for the generals uh, because they are really bright people. And then we have in the upper class, the smart people and a little bit lazy one. So what the general was writing, these people are foreseen for the highest management position because they have the necessary distance also to implement difficult tasks and have also the right reflection to make the right things and give the right orders to their staff to implement it. The only one you have really to be careful are the active lazy ones, active stupid ones, because they never think something can good come out of that. So Jack Welch has understood that and put this 10% rotation, and uh, it's a very nasty matrix, but it's going for big organizations, because especially when they grow over time. Why is that? Because it's all about evolution. In evolution, there are only two paths, involve or die out. You cannot cheat evolution. And it's the same with companies, with innovation. Involve or die out. Some governments, even in my own governments, had put money into stone coal subvention. That was a technology of the past. Does not work. You cannot cheat nature. So therefore, we have a saying, the tree who has stopped to grow has started to die. Involve or die out. And this is for all industry in every size in every industry. Why? because the numbers are just brutal. If you look from today backwards, 70% of the companies which were the Fortune 500 are remaining. 70%, that's 50 years, that's not much. We look 2000, half of the companies are remaining. The rest are not part of the list anymore. So what will be the future? 10, 15, I don't know. So therefore evolution and innovation is key for every DNA of a corporate. Which brings me to the entrepreneurs. My team has supported 1,200 startups, 1,000 business cases the last decade. And entrepreneurship is not a sprint. Entrepreneurship is not even a marathon. 
So that's the bad news for all the entrepreneurs, and I know it for myself. Entrepreneurship is a decathlon because you have to do so many things at the same time. Finding the right people, finding customers, bootstrap, finding funding, uh, create uh, your product, taking care of your brand, taking care of quality control. And this is where the corporates and the government can help. We invest in seed and collaborate. We help the companies to grow over a time. And we do that, do not that only for three months or four months. We do it for a long time because, come on, look to your kids. You get a kid. Uh, uh, my sons are born. They don't come with a university diploma. It takes time. And this is where the support also for the entrepreneurship and the innovation is needed. For the Star Trek fans, Maybe you remember that we are the Borg. Resistance is fertile. Lower the shields and surrender us the ship. This is some ways big corporates do also innovation. They just buy companies. It does not work because they bring corporate communication, corporate control, corporate finance, uh, corporate IT to these small companies. And within a year, the innovation mindsets are vanished away. So there's a different way between assimilate, like the boys do, work with them. And, like the Irish saying, on the shoulders of the giants you see further. We corporates and governments and government institutions, we are the giants. And we just let our kids, our entrepreneurs, to climb on our shoulders. And the corporates have to understand that. All the startups knock on the door of the corporates. But sometimes the door is closed. And the only way they can succeed is to disrupt the business model of the giants. Okay, when that's the goal is, that is also evolution. So what are the key things you have to watch? Jim March was a professor in Stanford and I'm a big fan of him, and he said it very easy. When you become a more bigger, more profitable, more uh, evaluated company, you become less innovative because you become bigger. Therefore, you have to balance two things, exploitation and exploration. Exploitation makes us faster, lighter, cheaper, better. That's in the short term. Exploration is going to the moon, going to the Everest, going to the deep sea, going to Mars. It's long term. When we are young, we explore every day. When we become older, we exploit because we have so much in our brain and so much understanding. So how do you do that? First, you have to welcome challenges. Embrace them. Happy to have new challenges. Challenges is something good. And this is an org chart of a company which is not embracing challenges. Uh, maybe it's more a joke because you have too many people saying no. Therefore, this is a job title which I still want to have in my life. It's the chief devil officer who asks in the board meeting, do we really do the right thing? Especially senior people can do that when they have the necessary distance. In mechanical engineering, we learn when you do something new, you have friction. And if you have a mechanical engineer, uh, system without friction, you do something wrong. So friction is part of the game if it's towards the future business. Be ahead of the crisis. The Intel boss uh, years ago, Alan Grove, said, as a CEO, you have to be panic paranoid. I say maybe not panic, but a little bit paranoid. Cr being ahead of the crisis is good because it has not to be years. It can be two hours because then in sport is the same you're not out of breath. If you're in the crisis, you have to lay off people. You always react, you cannot plan. Think about multiple time scale. Thinking about a quarter or two does not help. Even thinking about four years does not help. This is one, I think, of the, the great uh, advantages and one of the great ideas we have that the kingdom thinks very long term in his big projects. I'm coming from an area and we have a forest at home. As a, as a farmer, you learn when you plant a tree, you cannot harvest it right away. You plant it, your son is growing it, and your grandkid is harvesting it. So every farmer who has a forest thinks in three generations. Then you can really do big things. Think in multiple time scales. And my favorite one, be skeptical of success. Bill Gates said very nicely once, success is a lousy teacher. It teaches smart people to think that they cannot fail. So therefore, be careful of the success trap. Isn't it wonderful? You have a very big and powerful country. Seeing from space, you see the Red Sea, you see the little shimmering that is our atmosphere, which makes life on Earth or not. 
And as I said, if you want to speak more about space tomorrow in the session at 4 o'clock. But it also shows that the big picture is really frightening. It's pretty small, these blue earths, the blue marble and the blackness of sky. But when we look with the big pictures, we see the opportunities. In space, we will be able for that. There will be in the next five years, in the next five years, a lower Earth's economy. There will be 100,000 satellites launched, and the kingdom will have a share on that. There will be a trend to occupy Mars, not because we do not love our Earth, no, because we are explorer. We want to go ahead. We, the Russian scientists said very nicely, Earth is the cradle of mankind, but nobody wants to be in the cradle forever. And maybe we find new customers, new partners, new airlines, and new routes. Why is that important? It's especially for our kids important. 50 years ago, when I was born in 96, there was an entire generation in front of the TV stations, getting inspired by the moon landing. And this is the reason why we had so many engineers, so many people going to STEM, also females, because they got inspired by the moon landing. And the inspiration leads to one thing, and this is the only slide you have to remember. It's my last slide nearly. It's the curiosity. This is my son, I have two boys, Lucas and Johannes, twins. And my son Johannes was sitting in the toolbox in our holiday home, and he was dismantling the toolbox. Screw, what is this, a screwdriver, a nut. Where's our curiosity? Our kids have that. Find your curiosity back. Look where you and your organization, you go on the autopilot. Look where the last time you have done something new, what did it did with you, where you can innovate. Let's find our curiosity back because this is what it drives us. And it's so much fun to see that. And my kids, they do remind me every day. My startups remind me every day. And for the end, I share you a picture from Mars Express on the way to Mars. Mars Express was turning back to Earth and shows us a picture which is not familiar with us. On the one side, you see our blue marble, our mothership Earth, and the other side, you see Moon. And sometimes that is enough that you step back, turn to see the big picture, because that's the space you need to need your business off the ground. Thank you very much.